Today, I'm going to make my wife happy. I'm going to do a little math. Hi, Tony DeWitt here. I'm a Missouri appellate attorney, retired, and I bring you a fresh perspective on the law without offering any legal advice. So pull up a chair. This is what we're discussing today. As I've said on here before, my wife taught math for 26 years. She taught everything from uh, a beginner, like beginning algebra, all the way up to calculus. And so she's one of those math brains, and she puts me to shame. I always tell her that the reason I became a lawyer is because I can do 40% of any number, but that doesn't seem to impress her, considering that she can do all kinds of calculations. Now, I have a son-in-law who is an engineer. He happens to be a nuclear power engineer. And as a result, he winds up making calculations and doing calculations all the time. So I'm in a group of people who know a little something about equations and how they work. But today, I wanted to find out whether or not, if indeed Karen Reed had been going 24 miles an hour in her Lexus, would she have broken the arm that supposedly was hit? by that Lexus. And so I decided to do a little bit of investigation. The first thing I had to do was make sure that I understood the right Lexus SUV, the 570. And then the next thing I had to do was go get the curb weight. Now the curb weight is the weight of the vehicle as it comes off the showroom floor. In other words, if it's just sitting there without a 200 pound person sitting in it. So Lexus says that it's between 5,800 and 6,000 pounds curb weight at the time that it comes off the showroom floor. Now, if Karen Reed had any equipment in there, maybe a suitcase or two, you know, any number of things maybe from her work, that might have affected the, the weight of the vehicle as well. But we don't know that, so I'm just going strictly on the curb weight here. So we're going to say 5,800. Now, the next thing that it might be appropriate to know is how much force it takes to break a bone. And this is from Discovery. Pretty good information usually comes from here. And they say that it takes about 4,000 newtons of force to break the typical human femur. Now, the femur is the bone that runs from the hip to the knee in the upper part of the leg. And it is one of the strongest bones in the human body. The only bone stronger, I believe, is the skull, but don't quote me on that. Uh, so the arm would more likely than not be a lot less than 4,000 newtons of force because it has a much smaller radius, no pun intended. <laughs> the forearm has a much smaller radius and ulna, and, and the radius of those bones is smaller. The radius of the actual femur bone is much larger. And so for that reason, I'm going to say we're going to use 4,000 as the gold standard of the number of newtons that are required to break a bone. And just so you're keeping up, newtons are a measure of force. We're not talking about fig newtons here. Now, the next thing we need to know is how do we calculate force? How do we get a value in newtons? Well, first, we have to know the mass and then we have to know the acceleration. And acceleration is a difficult calculation to make because it depends on time and distance and speed. All three of those factors go into how much acceleration is present at any given moment. So assuming that they're correct, that the vehicle was traveling 24 miles an hour and it wasn't just spinning on ice, we're going to use 24 miles per hour as the final speed, and the initial speed we're going to use as zero because she was backing up. She had to be starting from zero. Thinking about my own three-point turns, I believe that probably at the end of a three-point turn would probably take four seconds, and that is if you weren't applying the brakes, and we're going to assume that because this supposedly knocked him into the uh, yard, that, he, that she wasn't applying the brakes. So if you have a four-second duration, 
24 miles per hour, you get 2.682 meters per second squared. That's an important number that we're going to figure into the force calculator. And here is the force calculation. Force is equal to mass times acceleration. So we need to know what the force is in Newton's mass of an object with the acceleration. If we have the mass and we have the acceleration, 2.682, then we can calculate the Newtons of force that would be present at impact. So this is from Calculator Soup Online Calculators, and it's an excellent site if you ever have to calculate anything. It has physics calculators, chemistry calculators, algebraic calculators, all kinds of different things. But here we're going to force equals mass times acceleration. We're going to get the force in newtons with a 5,800-pound vehicle going 2.682 meters per second squared. And they're going to use their own, they're going to calculate it to their own significant figures. So if we calculate that, it comes up to 7,055 newtons. Now keep in mind, as I showed on the video yesterday, and I'll repeat here, in addition, it would look to me like, based on this expert's supposed opinion here, that he's getting hit in the hip at the same time, he's getting hit in the arm. And if you get hit in the hip, that's the longest bone in the body. The, the femur is the longest bone in the body. That force at 7,055 newtons would very clearly break that femur. And he didn't have a broken femur. And he didn't have a broken arm. And I would expect to see those things. But you know what else he didn't have? He didn't have any bruising. He didn't have any bruising on his femur didn't have any bruising on his hip, didn't have any bruising on his chest, because when the video shows him with his arm being hit at two miles an hour, that arm comes straight back into his chest, and that's going to produce a bruise too. And probably, if there's enough newtons of force to break a long bone, there's probably enough newtons of force to break the ribs as well. And again, none of those things broke. So. The whole idea, the whole physics of this just doesn't make sense. There's a reason, of course, why it doesn't make sense. That's because it could not make sense because it never happened. As I have shown previously, I think the, the experiment was very badly skewed. The guy is looking right down at that tail light when he moves his arm down to the tail light. And supposedly he's the same height, right? Or, you know, John might have been an inch or two taller, so maybe he moved it down to, to simulate what John would do, but he never mentioned that, and he certainly didn't testify to that. To me, this indicates an attempt to essentially provide evidence for something that didn't happen. Now, the really hard thing to do in any endeavor is to prove a negative. If your wife came home to you today and said, prove you didn't go sleep with the neighbor, how would you go about doing that? Or if your husband came home tonight and said, prove you didn't sleep with the neighbor, how would you do that? Well, it's really hard to prove a negative. You could, of course, go over to the neighbor and get him to attest to your virtue. But again, him or her, I guess, <laughs> attest to your virtue. But that's Again, not proof, that's just testimony. Proof, rock-solid proof of something that didn't happen is an oxymoron. And so all of the people who are out there who are dyed-in-the-wool prosecution camp people keep saying she needs to prove she didn't do it. Well, that's nonsense. She doesn't. She just needs to raise reasonable doubt. The physics alone raises reasonable doubt. And I do hope that Mr. Alessi gets into some of this today in the cross-examination. And one more thing, if I've gotten any of this wrong, please let me know, because I will correct it. That's what I have for you today. I hope you found it helpful, interesting, or maybe both. If there's a subject you'd like me to discuss, please feel free to send me an email at the address above.
If you like what we do, please feel free to subscribe and come on back to the beach tomorrow. I release videos every weekday, weather and work permitting. If you have the opportunity today, do a kindness for your fellow man. It makes the world a better place, one kind act at a time. And now, YouTube has some suggestions for other videos of mine that you might like. Mm -hmm.